Okay, so what did you guys find for Delta G naught? Seventy nine point nine kilojoules. Okay, yeah, thirty thirty six. Yes. Okay. Okay, so that's our delta G naught. So we've essentially answered A here because this is at equilibrium. So we would we can use it for K there. Okay. So um, here delta G uh, essentially is at standard state conditions, so delta G is delta G naught, okay? All right, so that's for that first situation at 25 degrees Celsius. Now, um, look at B. Whoops. Okay, so there's the equation, delta G equals delta G naught plus RT ln of Q, and we want to solve for B now. How am I going to set that up? This is A. So B, I'm going to solve for delta G is equal to 79.9. Oh. I've got to watch my units, right? Joules per mole. Well, what is in joules that I have to have this in joules? R. My R. So I can't, I can't have it in kilojoules. I have to make sure it's in joules. Okay. Plus 8.314 joules uh, per Kelvin mole. Two hundred ninety-eight Kelvin. I'll cancel those. Uh, times ln of Q. What is Q here? These two multiplied by each other. It's the products over the reactant, but reactant is liquid, so it's just these two things, right? Okay. Ln of Q, so Ln of one times ten to the negative three. No, we're on B. That's just going to give us this. Oh, we already did that. Times one times ten to the negative four. Okay. Okay, so what are you finding for your delta G here? Thirty nine? Oh, sorry, okay. Thirty nine point nine. Now try C and D.
Okay, what are you guys getting for C? <laughs> What'd you get for C? Okay, and how about D? Okay. Good. Okay. Okay, so that's what we should be getting. All right. <coughs> you're, doing your, you're doing your math correctly. So that's how you would use those two equations. One of them is for standard state conditions, right? And you can use the tablet data in the back of the book. Um, but if you are given concentrations that are not at equilibrium, you can calculate your Q and use that uh, to find the, the delta G if you know the delta G naught. So you might have to calculate delta G naught first and then use that in your equation here to calculate delta G for that, for that reaction at those non-standard state conditions. Okay, what is the reaction going to do at these uh, concentrations? Okay, and that's what you're trying to find out. Okay, so that's about it for chapter 7, 19, <laughs> 16 I mean, that's 16 right? I, was, I still get confused. Okay, for thermodynamics, um, we're going to start in the next chapter. Uh, of electrochemistry. Electrochemistry is fun. <laughs> and it was, it was fun. Okay. All right, so um, Electrochemistry, we're talking about oxidation reduction processes, okay, uh, in which uh, the energy released by a spontaneous reaction is converted to electricity, okay, or electrical energy is used to cause a non spontaneous reaction to occur. So we can drive it both ways using electricity, these uh, uh, electrochemical processes, okay. So here we see the equation magnesium plus oxygen produces magnesium oxide, okay? So if we identify the half reactions, do you guys know what I mean when I say half reactions? No. Okay, so in oxidation reduction, you always have two things happening. You have something being oxidized, you have something being reduced. If you split it up into its oxidation reaction and its reduction reaction, we call those the half reactions. Okay, so here magnesium is going to Mg2+, right? Here's magnesium over here. Magnesium is magnesium 2+. Would you agree? Because oxygen has a negative 2 charge, I can predict that from the periodic table, right? Oxygen, because of its position on the periodic table, will gain 2 electrons and become negatively 2 charged. So if it's with magnesium, I can also predict the charge of magnesium. Magnesium's a alkaline earth metal, it has two valence electrons, it's not going to hold on to those two valence electrons, it's going to lose them and become magnesium 2 plus. What is everything here going to become? Everything here, 2 plus. These guys, unpredictable, right? They're transition metals. But over here, we uh, have a few things that we can predict as far as ions becoming ions, okay? Um, however, we have to be careful with that with, with oxidation numbers. We can't always do that. But oxygen is something that we can rely on. We can't rely on nitrogen or sulfur or phosphorus or even fluorine, but we can rely on oxygen. Oxygen uh, is negative 2. Hydrogen is plus 1. Okay? Those are the things we're going to rely on. So here, I know that oxygen is negative 2. Magnesium must be magnesium 2 plus. So I break it up into its half reaction. Was this oxidized or reduced? Reduced. Was magnesium, well you have a 50-50 chance. So <laughs> okay. 
So reduction is gain, oxidation is loss, oil rig, right? Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Oil rig. Okay? That's how you remember because everybody has the hardest time remembering that. Okay, so oil rig, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So here, did I lose or gain electrons? <laughs> okay, if it's a product, that means what? I lost them. But don't even look at that yet. Magnesium 2 plus, did I gain or lose electrons? If I have a two positive charge, that means magnesium lost two electrons, right? Because this charge is now positive. If I gain electrons, my charge becomes negative. Electrons are negatively charged. If you do chemistry, you have to be dyslexic. Plus is minus, minus is plus, right? So. <laughs> The, the potential. Yeah. yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Good. That's right. Okay. So here, magnesium 2 plus means that it lost two electrons, but I have two magnesiums here, so that means I lost a total of four electrons during this process. Magnesium lost two electrons. Uh, since I have two of them, that means uh, I lost two electrons four electrons, okay? Okay, so that's the first half reaction. That's the oxidation. And then we have uh, oxygen. Looking at what happens to oxygen. Oxygen, okay, became O2 minus. Two minus means I gain two electrons. I gain two electrons. So but I have two oxygens that gain two electrons. So that's a total of four electrons that it gained. And so I have O2 plus four electrons gives me two O2 minus. These electrons here have to match. If I lose four electrons here, they are gained here. Okay. So when we break up these half reactions, uh, in the end, the, uh, the electrons have to be the same from the uh, reduction reaction and the oxidation reaction. They both have to have the same number of electrons. Okay? The electrons need to be accounted for. They will always be accounted for. Okay, So um, this is reduction because I gained electrons. <coughs> OK, yes. OK, so in review, hopefully you guys remember how to do oxidation numbers. Okay. Determining the oxidation number, the charge of the atom uh, would have in a molecule. So if it's in its elemental state, the oxidation number is always zero. Okay, we can we'll know that it's zero. Okay. Monatomic uh, ions um, is equal to its charge. So if it's an ion, it's equal to its charge. Lithium plus one, iron. 3 plus has an oxidation number of 3 plus. Okay, that's kind of an intuitive idea. The oxidation number of oxygen is usually negative 2, except in hydrogen peroxide, where it's negative 1. Okay, so H2O2, uh, the O2 minus, it is negative 1. Okay, but that's about the only situation. You can, you can count on oxygen, and you need to. You have to count on oxygen being negative 2. Okay. Okay. The oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one, except when it is bonded to uh, metals and binary compounds. In this case, is its uh, oxidation number is negative one. Okay. Um, so, for the most part, you can count on hydrogen being plus one, unless it's with a positively charged thing like a metal. Then you would assume that it's negative one. Okay. Um, group one metals are plus one. Group two metals are two plus. Okay, <coughs> that's something we can rely on. We can rely on that. 
Okay, so the sum has to equal the charge of the, the thing. If it's an ionic thing, then it has to equal the negative one charge or the plus two charge that's left over. Okay, so let's identify the oxidation numbers of all the atoms in HCO3 minus bicarbonate. Okay, so oxygen has a negative two. Okay, so the oxidation number of oxygen is negative two. It is not negative six. Just because there's three of them doesn't mean that oxygen has a negative six oxidation number. Okay, so, um, but these three oxygens contribute negative six charges, right? But the oxidation number of oxygen is negative two. A single oxygen has the oxidation number of negative two. And that's how you identify the oxidation number or something, is by its charge as an individual, okay? Carbon, or so let's go here to hydrogen. Hydro hydrogen has? plus one, okay? So we have to have one charge left over, right? So we don't have to balance negative six charges, we have to balance negative five charges because we have one charge left over. So what would a carbon have to be to balance out those uh, other negative four charges because one of them is being balanced by the hydrogen? Plus four. The oxidation state of carbon here is plus four. Okay, so that's how we identify those uh, oxidation numbers. There we go. This one, yes. Carbon is plus four. Okay. Now this is always a challenge for people. So pay close attention. Okay. Um, balancing redox equations. Okay. There, there's a process, and it's not, once you learn the process, it actually isn't that difficult. Uh, but for some reason, it, it seems to, that process seems to uh, take a while to, to get, to become understood, okay? So the oxidation of iron 2 plus, iron 3 plus by uh, dichromate and acid. We're going to balance this, okay? So first we write the unbalanced equation. So this would be the unbalanced equation. Iron 2 plus plus the dichromate gives me iron 3 plus and chromium 3 plus. Okay. And we want to balance this in acid solution. So first we just balance everything. Oh, sorry. We're, we're going to separate into its half reactions. Excuse me. So Oxidation, um, Fe2 plus goes to Fe3 plus. That was loss of electrons, right? I lost an electron going from 2 plus to 3 plus. But I have the same number of irons, so as far as these are concerned, that's balanced. So, but I have to show the electrons, okay? Which I'll do later, I suppose. Okay? But here, I have dichromate going to chromium. So these are the two half reactions. Um, so the top reaction, I don't have any unbalanced oxygens. But the bottom one, I do. So I want to balance the oxygens. And the way that I do that is I use water to balance those uh, oxygens. Okay. So here's the case with the dichromate to chromium. I add the number of waters that will balance it. So do you see how I balance the chromiums though also? So that's one of the first steps. I have two chromiums here, I have two chromiums here. They're balanced, okay? But I have seven oxygens. I didn't have seven oxygens before, so to balance those seven oxygens, I add seven waters. That's not hard. You just add the number of waters as oxygens that you have, and you'll balance it, right? But now, what do I have on this side that I don't have over here? I have 14 hydrogens, right? So I have to balance those. Well, this isn't an acid solution, so I add over on the other side, I'm going to add H pluses. Okay? 
and I just have to add 14 to balance out those uh, seven waters, seven H pluses, and now I get 14 H plus plus uh, dichromate produces two chromiums plus seven H2O. Okay. What's the base step? The last line. So going from two to four. What do you mean? Two to four. Balance the atoms other than oxygen and hydrogen. Oh, okay, so they're just saying balance the chromiums here. But I can't balance the oxygens, right? So I just balance everything else first. So I have two chromiums, I balance those. And then that'll tell me how many oxygens I need to add, okay? Because if I, if I balance this out and I have to change this number, then that's gonna tell me how many waters I need over here later, okay? But I didn't have to change this, so I'm gonna need seven. But if this was a two, I would need 14 waters, right? Okay. Are you just taking them individually and seeing if you can do that without altering it? Like taking that and seeing out the reactions individually? You're gonna break up the two half reactions. This one is balanced yeah. according to uh, everything that's not oxygen and hydrogen. Okay, so I don't have to manipulate it any more right now. This one is not, so that's why I had to change it from CR uh, to two chromiums right here, because I only had one before, right? Uh, and that's just so I know how many waters to add in a minute. And then I add the waters, I add the hydrogens, okay. Now, one of the final things I need to do is add electrons to one side of each half reactions to balance the charges. Okay, so electrons, um, for this guy, I lost electrons, right? So whenever you lose electrons, they need to be the product of the reaction. They need to be a product of the reaction if you lose them. So Fe2 plus, Fe3 plus, plus one uh, E minus. So one electron, I lost one electron there, okay? Um, and then for this reaction, I gained electrons, right? I had to gain electrons in order to uh, uh, to do the ox uh, the reduction, excuse me, the reduction. Okay. So let's go back and see how that how that is, okay? So here, oxygen has what charge? What's the oxidation number here? Negative two. Negative two. What's the oxidation number here? Negative two. Okay, H plus? H plus, right? So the hydrogens and the oxygens didn't change oxidation state, right? What did? The chromium. Well, what is the chromium charge here? Six, it's plus six, okay? So the chromium has a plus six oxidation number here, okay? And over here, it's, <coughs> excuse me, three plus. So that means, did I gain or lose electrons? I gained three electrons, right? But I have two chromiums. So that means I gained six electrons, okay? So that's why I would write six plus six electrons here as part of this reaction. I had to gain six electrons in order to cause the oxidation state of that chromium to go from plus six to plus three. And it's plus six. Can you just refresh my memory as to the oxidation number is six? Because okay, so oxygen, oxygen is donating how many negative charges? There's seven of them. It's two times seven is Okay, negative 14, but then I have two left over, right? Because I, I have a negative two charge, so that's negative 12. Mm -hmm. okay. And then this would have to be plus 12 divided by two for each chromium, so it's plus six. Okay? 
So that's how I get that. <clears throat> okay, so that's how I end up here. 60 electrons plus 14H plus, etc. Okay? Um, but do the number of electrons match here and here uh, between the iron and the dichromate? Okay, there you go. That's right. Okay, so I have to I have to multiply the iron reaction by six. Okay, in order to make it match uh, as far as electrons go. Okay. Okay, so in order for the electrons to match, I have to make this six ions so that it will donate six electrons. Okay, now the number of electrons will cancel, which it needs to. It has to cancel. That's a requirement. They have to cancel. Now to find the the final reaction, I just need to add those two reactions together. Add the two half reactions, okay? The oxidation, the reduction, and um, the electrons cancel. And if anything else cancels, then you cancel it, okay? But here, nothing else is canceling, so we end up with 14H pluses, uh, a chromate, plus six ions produces six iron three pluses. Here's iron two, six iron threes, uh, and two chromium threes plus seven waters. Okay, and that is the balanced oxidation reduction reaction. Okay, so you break it up into its half reactions. You balance everything individually. You add um, oxygen where uh, you add water where there's unbalanced oxygens, okay? And you add hydrogens to balance those, the waters. Uh, and then you find the electrons, figure out the electrons in each reaction, make them equal, and then combine them, okay? So that's the process in an acid solution, okay? In a base solution, it's the exact same process. It's exactly the same process with one exception. Let's see, do they talk about it here? Okay. Um, yes. Okay. For reactions and basic solutions, you add hydroxide to both sides of the reaction for every H plus that appears in the final equation. So if, let me just manipulate this as if it was a. Um, as if they said in basic solution. I would do this exact same process. I would get here, okay? And then I would say um, 14 OH minuses plus 14 OH minuses. And then I would combine the these right here and say that there's 14 H two O's, okay? Because OH minus plus H plus is water. So I have 14 waters, but do you see how I have seven over here? So these would have canceled, and I would have been left with seven H2O over here um, and 14 OH minuses over here, okay? So that's how I would have further balanced this if it was in basic solution. But the process would have been exactly the same all through the first steps, okay? Exactly the same process all through the beginning. And then um, I add the hydroxides, form water on wherever the H plus site is, and I eliminate the waters as necessary, and I end up with my final equation. Okay. Okay. So that's balancing redox reactions. Okay. We'll 
We'll do a few examples of those uh, here in a little while. Um, but now let's further understand this concept of oxidation reduction, okay? And how these uh, processes, the, the oxidation reduction processes can conduct electricity. In a lot of cases, they conduct it spontaneously, okay? So we have two metals. One has a certain potential to oxidize or to reduce, and which is different than another metal which has its own um, potential to be oxidized or to reduce, okay? And if you put those two metals in contact with one another, then one of those metals will cause the oxidation of the other one. And therefore, it becomes reduced, okay? So here we see zinc, and it's in a, sol in a solution of zinc sulfate. And here we see, so this is the zinc bar, it's a zinc bar, and here is a copper bar. So we have a zinc metal and a copper metal, okay? And this copper is in a solution of copper sulfate. So here we have zinc ions and here we have copper ions. Here we have solid copper, here we have um, solid zinc. So if an ion becomes oxidized, if a metal ion becomes oxidized, it goes from its ionic state to its solid state. If a solid piece of metal become, becomes oxidized, it goes from its solid state to its ionic state. Because it lost electrons, it will then begin to be, it will become ionic. And if it's in solution, when it becomes ionic, it dissolves because it's, on, it's an ion, right? And water will surround it and dissolve it. It'll make it aqueous. You said if a metal, a metal ion becomes ionized, it goes from the ionic state to the solid state. If a metal, a solid piece of metal becomes ionized, if a solid piece of metal becomes ionized, it will go from its solid state to its aqueous ionic state, okay? Being charred, it became charged. And so now it can be surrounded by water molecules and, and become dissolved into that water, okay? And that's what's going to happen here between these two metals. So whichever one is becoming reduced, meaning it's gaining electrons, the thing that's becoming reduced, gaining electrons, is going from ionic to solid, right? So as it does that, the, uh, the electrode, the piece of metal is going to increase in size, right? Because it starts getting surrounded by more and more solid pieces of itself. What do you think is going to happen to the thing that's be becoming oxidized? It starts to go away, it shrinks, right? Because as it's becoming oxidized, the solid pieces of metal are going off of it. They're going off of it and it's dissolving into solution, okay? So that's what we see happening here at these two electrodes. Zinc is oxidized. The zinc is losing electrons. You see the electrons, they're being lost here through this wire. And where are they going? They're going to the copper. The copper picks up those electrons and becomes reduced. And because it becomes reduced, it goes from copper to plus. Remember, this is a copper solution. It has a bunch of copper ions in it. So those copper ions pick up those electrons, and then they bind to the solid copper. They bind to it. And so this electrode would increase in size. This electrode would begin to dissolve. Okay because of that oxidation reduction process that's occurring. And you see if you put a light bulb in the middle there, then passing those electrons would do work because they're passing spontaneously from one thing to the other and you would then be able to light up the light bulb because of that process that's occurring. Hmm. 
Okay. So this is an example of a spontaneous redox reaction um, that can occur. Okay. So here, here it is uh, to, on a voltmeter, and when it's connected to the voltmeter, you can actually get uh, a reading of the voltage um, that is passed here between these two. Um, the amount of volts passed during this this uh, process. Okay, you get 1.1 volts. Um, all right. So one molar would be at standard state conditions. So this would be an E naught. We say an E naught electrical cell um, in its standard state conditions. Okay, uh, if it's at one molar. And you do have to have this salt. There has to be a salt bridge in these uh, these types of galvanic cells, okay, for in order for the the, uh, the electrons to to continue to pass, because otherwise uh, it, it would last just for an instant and then it would be done. But in this way, having that salt bridge allows it to continue, okay. All right. So here. Um, we see kind of how they they uh, determine the potential of something to be oxidized or reduced, and that was by setting something to zero. Let's just choose something and set its, uh, its potential to be oxidized or reduced to zero, and then if something um, has a greater potential to be oxidized than it, then we'll determine its uh, reduction potential. Okay, um, that's either above or below that. So that's what they did. They set hydrogen, H2 gas, to have a oxidation reduction potential of zero. And then they started to compare everything to it. So here we have this galvanic cell set up, and this H2 gas is at zero. And now we want to study and find out what is the potential of zinc. What is its potential, okay, uh, compared to hydrogen? Okay, so in this case, um, zinc is going from zinc solid to zinc two plus, so it's losing two electrons. It's becoming oxidized. So it's becoming oxidized, um, and we end up with a, whoops. Um, with this final equation at 0.76 volts. Okay, so this is a positive 0.76 volts, and we would start to develop a chart: oxygen, or sorry, hydrogen zero, and then um, we would write 0.76 volts for zinc. So this is its reduction potential. Okay. Okay, and like I said, um, at one molar and one atmosphere of gases is where we would take the E naught, which is the standard state conditions. And that's important again, just like it was with delta G naught. Delta G was at the standard state conditions, right? And you could relate it to K. We can do the same thing with E naught. We can relate it to K to the equilibrium constant. Uh, we could also relate it to delta G naught. If it's all, if they're at their standard state conditions, okay. So that's why we we set things to their standard state conditions so we can relate them to those uh, those other things. We'll see how that works, okay. Um, but we call this a standard hydrogen electrode, an SHE, and the SHE is used to determine the potentials of uh, these other metals and things, uh, so that we can begin to understand what things would would um, cause the reduction of another thing, okay? And it's set at zero, like we said. The standard state, the E naught of hydrogen at one atmosphere is zero volts, okay? So we set it, the standard hydrogen electrode, to zero, and then we can begin to compare everything else to it. So that zinc uh, was at 0.76. So by by doing that, um, we're able to determine 
um, the voltage of the entire system easily because hydrogen's at zero, okay? <clears throat> All right, now this is an important equation right here. E of the cell is equal to E of the cathode minus E of the anode. The cathode is the, positively, the positive thing. The anode is the negative thing. So looking at this situation, okay, um, we see that um, the, uh, the potential here is that our cathode, okay, is the H pluses, um, and our zinc is giving away the electrons, okay? Uh, so... Okay, the zinc is giving away the electrons, so it becomes our anode, uh, whereas the H plus is going to accept those and become H2, and that's our cathode. Okay, so that's how we're going to determine what the anode or the cathode is. Or in other words, um, what happened to the zinc? Zinc to zinc 2 plus. It got oxidized, okay? Um, so the anode and the cathode, okay? So reduction minus oxidation, in other words. Reduction minus oxidation. That's how we'll, we can look at this. Okay, so the, the voltage potential here is zero. For uh, the zinc, it's 0.76. So um, the, the cell overall uh, is 0.76 volts. Well, that's what we set it to, right? And this is zero. We know what that is. And so we can determine that um, the uh, E of the cell is equal to a negative 0.76 volts, OK? A, law, uh, a negative 0.76 volts. Now, um, this is different than delta G. Delta G spontaneous processes we determine to be negative, right? Negative, but that's opposite kind of of this kind of thing. And if it's a positive potential, then it'll it'll um, be spontaneous. If it's a negative potential, it'll be uh, non-spontaneous. Okay, so it's a little different. Okay, so here's another example. Uh, in this case, it's kind of re reversed, okay? So instead of the hydrogen being the cathode, it is now the anode. And so we can see that whatever you are, you can always be the other thing dependent on what you're reacting with, okay? So if, if you have a piece of zinc that is an anode when it reacts with um, one metal, it will be the cathode when it reacts with a different metal, okay? Because, because of its potential. The potential to be reduced or, or oxidized would be, dif the differences in those potentials would determine which way the electrons would pass spontaneously, okay? So here, um, we have the hydrogen, uh, standard hydrogen cell, okay, would, would be at zero. Uh, this 0.34 volts is what's passing through the cell um, from the anode to the cathode. Uh, we get this reaction, okay. E naught of the cell equals uh, the cathode and the anode, cathode minus the anode, so the copper minus the hydrogen. So in this case, instead of becoming a negative voltage, we get a positive voltage. 
So 0.34 volts for copper. Zinc was a negative 0.7 something volts, right? Okay. So now we're, we're starting to establish a table. So we could put for uh, copper, we could put it as a positive number, maybe above um, hydrogen, and then uh, the um, zinc would go below hydrogen. And we're starting to see the differences in these reduction potentials between two different metals. Okay? All right. And that's what we, we've done. We've been able to develop a chart uh, of this nature. Okay? So hydrogen is set at zero. Okay? And as I move above that, I get these positive um, numbers, okay, which are increases in the oxidizing uh, agents, okay? When I say oxidizing agent, I mean something that um, causes the loss of electron, electrons of something else. So if I, if I am a strong oxidizing agent, that means I am a weak reducing agent. Okay? So as far as the reducing agent goes, it would be exactly the opposite. Reducing agent would be something that what? That causes the reduction of something else. If I am the reducing agent, I cause the reduction of that other thing. Reduction is what? Gain of electrons. So if I am a reducing agent, I have become oxidized. Okay? Whatever is oxidized is the reducing agent. It gave its electrons away. It's the reducing agent. So as I move down, these things will give away electrons. Okay? Uh, increasing strength of reducing agent. These things become oxidized very well. Okay? as I move down this chart. As I move up the chart, I'm increasing in the strength of the oxidizing agent, which is the thing that becomes reduced. The thing that becomes reduced is the thing that receives electrons. Doesn't that make sense that if you have this positive 2.87 charge, as does fluorine, that it has a strong potential to gain electrons? So it's a strong oxidizing agent because it has a strong attraction for electrons, right? Fluorine, fluorine has one of the highest electronegativities. It has a very strong attraction for electrons. It has a strong potential to draw electrons towards it. So does oxygen, okay? Oxygen has a strong, um, uh, oxidizing potential, okay? All right. Um, so if I take, um, let's say, manganese, and I react it with copper, So I take manganese and react it with copper. Who will be oxidized and who will be reduced? Manganese is not one of those elements. Okay, so manganese um, will become oxidized and copper will become reduced, okay? I'm sorry? Not necessarily because it's positive. Oh, when it says positive, it's reduced. No, no, no. I, I could have chosen some. Let me choose something else so you're not confused. Let's say manganese and iron. Manganese and iron. Iron will be reduced. Okay. okay. Iron is going to be reduced. Manganese is going to be oxidized, okay? And that reaction between those two things, okay? 
It's not because it's positive or negative, it's because it's higher on the chart. Yeah. Okay? So this one has a stronger reducing ability. This one has a stronger oxidizing ability. Mm -hmm. So this thing oxidizes this, this thing reduces this. Okay? That's their potentials because of their voltage potential here, because of the difference in those voltages. Okay? So um, these standard reduction potentials uh, charts are things you're going to have to refer to if we want to calculate the E naught of a cell. Okay? Remember, it's E naught of the cell equals the anode minus the cathode. Okay? So as long as we can identify what the anode is and what the cathode is, then we can calculate the E naught of a cell. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. It is. It's the cathode minus the anode. Okay? So um, once you identify those two things, you'll be able to um, calculate that very easily. Okay? And if they're both negative numbers, that's okay. We can still carry out the calculation. A minus, minus a minus, okay? Uh, you just get a, a more of a, more of a negative uh, number there. Okay. Let's see. Um, half cell reactions are reversible, but you have to. That would be through electrolysis, uh, uh, forcing the electrons back. OK, this is important. Changing the stoichiometric coefficients of a half cell reaction does not change the value of E0. OK? So if I have a balanced chemical equation, so for example, when you're calculating the delta G of formation, or the delta G of a reaction from the delta G of formation products minus reactants, which is kind of what this is, right? Okay. If we calculate that, <coughs> then we have to know the, the coefficients because we have to multiply everything by its coefficient, right? And then add out everything and then subtract products minus reactants, right? That's not what we do here. If I just know that it's manganese and it's iron, if I just know that, I don't need to know anything else about it. I don't have to know the balanced chemical equation because it won't affect it won't affect this. Okay? Uh, the voltage potential will be the same no matter how much metal I have on either side of the reactor. Okay? It'll still create the same voltage potential. So um, when you're calculating these and you see the balanced chemical equation, or if you don't have a balanced chemical equation, everybody kind of starts going, wait, I have to figure out this balanced chemical equation. You don't. You don't have to figure it out. All you need to know is the two metals. What are the two metals I have? Uh, find those reactions here, OK? And you can solve for the delta E of the cell simply by knowing that much information, OK? OK, what is the standard EMF of an electrochemical cell made of a cadmium electrode and um, a chromium electrode in their aqueous solutions? OK, in aqueous solutions of themselves. OK, so we're going to figure this out. Uh, from the chart, we see that CD2 plus plus 2E minus gives me cadmium at uh, a potential of point, negative 0.40 volts and chromium plus 3 electrons to chromium. Chromium 3 plus to chromium gives me uh, a voltage potential of negative 0.74 volts. So which one is higher on the chart? Okay, good. So let's go back and look at that. Okay, so 
as you're approaching zero, right, it's becoming less and less negative, and then you get to zero. Both of those are negative potentials. So the one that's higher on the chart would be the cadmium. What was the other metal? Chrom chromium? Okay. So here we have cadmium. Um, okay. And where's my chromium? Chromium's right here. Okay. So it's higher on that chart. So which one is going to be reduced? Which one is going to be oxidized? This is, the, this is the oxidizing agent, which means that chromium becomes what? Oxidized. Okay, this one becomes reduced. All right. Okay, so at my anode, which is oxidation, my anode is oxidation. Um, I have chromium going to chromium 3 plus. And at my cathode, which is reduction, I'm going from um, cadmium 2 plus to cadmium. Okay, so. This is the, the chemical equation, which remember I told you it doesn't matter to have a balanced chemical equation, okay? And you'll see that here, right? These, these are all at just um, coefficients of one, and here I have um, increased the coefficients, but I'm still going to do the cathode minus the anode, okay? R minus O. Reduction minus oxidation. Okay, and I'm going to end up with negative 0.4 minus a negative 0.74 gives me a 0.34 uh, voltage potential. So I didn't multiply these by coefficients or anything, right? I didn't change that. Uh, all I did was take the voltage potentials that I had, and I used them here. So for this cell, it's a 0.34 voltage potential. Okay, so spontaneity of redox reactions. So we're going to look at how delta G relates to the, um, the electrical potential of these cells. Okay. Um, so with this, um, delta G is equal to the the number of moles of electrons in a reaction times the Faraday constant, which is the charge of electrons per mole of it, okay, um, times the, the E of the cell, okay? 
And then that's for delta G. For delta G naught, it's the exact same thing, just in their standard state conditions. Moles of electrons. Okay, times the Faraday constant, which is uh, the charge of an electron times the moles of it. Okay, per mole. Okay, and here's Faraday's constant. 96,500 joules per volt times mole. Okay. It's a constant. That, that's F. That's what you would use there. Okay. Okay. Um, so you can see it's pretty similar to the delta G naught here of negative RT ln of K. Okay. We're going to use that as well. Uh, equals the negative uh, negative of the moles times the Faraday constant times the E naught of the cell. So that's for delta G. Um, so here, E naught of the cell then is equal to um, RT over N of F, natural log of K. All right. So we can set those two things equal to each other and we get we get a pretty simplified equation here once we do that, okay? Because we can, because all these constants and at 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298 Kelvin, we just do the math there, um, and we end up with a, a pretty uh, simplified version of this, okay? E naught of the cell equals 0 0.0257 volts per moles of electrons uh, times the natural log of K. All right, so that's at equilibrium, right? Because we're using a natural log of K. So you can imagine if it wasn't, then if it was E, it would uh, we'd be using Q, which we'll do too. Okay, which can also be re rewritten in this way. Instead of using the natural log, you just use the log. Okay, they're both exactly the same. You'll get exactly the same answer either way. So if you like using anti-log be better than E, then you could use this equation. Okay, uh, either way, I'll give you the same answer. Thank you, thank you. Okay, and this is how they all relate to each other. Okay, so we're now relating delta G, the electrical potential of the cell, um, to K, all right, in this way, in this triangle. This one? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Oh, yes, I would give you this on the reference material. Either, uh, I can't remember which one I give you. One of these, okay? But yeah, you wouldn't have to, no, 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 you don't have to, you don't have to worry about doing all that, okay? It, it's, you might have to do something like this, um, but you will be given this as well. Okay, so if you're, if you're just finding this from the moles and K, then you can easily do that. Okay, or if you're finding K, you can easily find K also um, from the moles and the E naught of the cell. So yes, you'll, you'll have that as a reference material. Okay, so it's different when we're looking at uh, these cell potentials because um, for delta G negative, you have a spontaneous reaction that favors the products in the forward direction, okay? But if your E naught of your cell is positive, that means it favors the products. It's going in the forward direction. Um, whereas if a delta G naught is positive, then it's kind of the reverse situation. And here, if your E naught is, is negative, it's uh, kind of that reverse direction. It favors the formation of reactants. Okay, so that's kind of how you would relate them. Or look at them. If you know, and if your E naught is zero, then that's at uh, your K is equal to one. It's at equilibrium. Okay. What is the equilibrium constant for the following reaction at 25 degrees Celsius? We're going to use this equation, um, and it's at so because it's at 25 degrees Celsius, that's one of the reasons we can use this equation. So it's not that the temperature isn't important; it's just that it's at the standard state condition that we can use this, okay? Um, 
here we have, so we want to find the equilibrium constant. We want to find k, right? So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, we have to find e naught of the cell, right? Uh, e naught of the cell equals c minus a, cathode minus the anode, right? So um, where are we going to get the information to do that? We have Fe plus and Ag uh, to Ag here, okay? Um, actually, let me see if I cannot pull up. Um, Okay, so here we have Fe3 plus, and here we have silver. Okay, so uh, silver is 0 .0, uh, 0.8, and iron is 0.77. So we would come here, we'd find those potentials. Okay, I'm sorry? Was it Fe2 plus? And that's different. Yep, okay, so that's, if it's Fe2+, plus, then we gotta find it for Fe2+, plus, uh, which is point, negative 0.44, okay? So negative 0.44 and plus uh, a 0.8, all right? Okay, so let's go back here, okay? Um, Okay, so we're here. So we're going to use that equation, deduction. Um, now, how many electrons are going to be used in this equation? Two, because we have two electrons uh, as the, from the balanced. Okay, you have to balance the electrons. So the reason you would need to balance the equation for this type of question is to find out how many electrons are being transferred. Okay, but. Um, Otherwise, for this part, you don't need the balanced chemical equation to remember, okay? Um, so then we get the point, negative 0.44 minus a 0.8, right? Um, and uh, since we're using the natural log of K, we're going to use E here to solve for K. You could have used the anti-log version and it would have worked just as well. And we get our Equilibrium constant is 1.23 times 10 to the negative 42 for this reaction between iron and silver. This is a very small constant. Silver. Seem concerned about that, Patrick. Okay with it? Sure. Okay. Okay, so, so, what's that? Okay. So this, <laughs> that's a bad time to find out. <laughs> okay, so um, this, you know, it was observed that this is a really small equilibrium constant. If you have a really small equilibrium constant, do you favor products or reactants? So if it, if you if you had a lot of if you had a lot of um, product, it'd be the top number, right? That cause your number to be bigger. If you had a lot of reactant, it'd be so it, it is. It's, it's mostly a reactant there. Okay. Uh, which look at the the sign of it. It's a negative, right? So because it's a negative, that means that uh, that doesn't really go forward very well. The reaction isn't a forward reaction. Right? between these, these two. Okay, so 
the effective concentration on the cell EMF. <coughs> so we've looked at these. Oh, so this is the Nernst equation. Yeah, I'm sorry. We haven't looked at that one yet. That's um, when you have concentrations that are not a standard state, right? And we can calculate Q and non-standard state conditions. Uh, and basically at any concentration, we can calculate Q at any of those concentrations. And delta G equals delta G naught plus the RTO on it. So once again, you could calculate delta G so that you can put it in that equation just like we did uh, when we were doing it for uh, finding delta G from um, uh, for thermodynamics, okay? So here for oxidation reduction, we could do the same thing. And uh, we end up with our, our Nernst equation. Okay, 298 Kelvin. So here, once again, uh, E is equal to E naught minus 0.257 volts over N, natural log of Q, okay? And um, so as long as you know the concentrations of those two things, it, this is a ratio. This is a ratio of the two, the two things, the, the, of the, the thing that's being oxidized and the thing that's being reduced. That Q, is, it's basically that ratio of those two things. Okay, because that's what we're looking at, those two things. Uh, you take the natural log of those um, and uh, add their concentrations, and then you'll be able to identify that. Okay. Will the following reaction occur spontaneously at 25 degrees Celsius? If iron is at 0.6 molar and cadmium is at 0 0.01 molar. Okay, so we want to we wanna identify these. Um, oxidation reduction, we go to our chart, we find our E. Uh, our cell potentials. Um, there's two electrons here being transferred. Okay, that's important. That's our N. So we find uh, the E of the cell, negative 0.44 minus negative uh, 0.4 here. Okay, um, E naught equals a negative 0.04 volts. Where did that, oh, that came from the chart, correct? We did. We got these numbers from the chart. Okay, last time I spent a lot of time going back to the chart. And we waste a lot of time, so this time I just <laughs> try to remind you that's the, where that comes from, those, that chart, okay? Which is a reference material on your test. You'll have that available, that chart. <coughs> so we found E <coughs> of the cell. <coughs> we can uh, E naught of the cell. We can put it into this equation here uh, for the nurse equation <coughs> and um, determine E. And that's going to tell us if uh, it's spontaneous or not. Okay, so like I said, this is the ratio, the Q products over reactants. So here you can see that um, we have Fe2 plus and Cd2 plus products, uh, Cd2 plus over the reactants, Fe2 plus, so 0 0.01 over 0 0.6. That's how I figure out Q. Is everybody okay with that? Products over reactants for Q, all right? Those are the aqueous, the things that are in aqueous concentrations. Everything else would be solid. You can't use solids, okay? So we have to use the things that are in concentration units, aqueous concentrations, all right? So CD2 plus and Fe2 plus concentrations, we put those two concentrations over one another uh, to determine the spontaneity of this reaction. E uh, equals 0 0.013, okay? So it's a positive, so it is spontaneous, right? So this, this will occur spontaneous at those concentrations. At other concentrations, they wouldn't. But at that concentration, it will. So, um, and it's possible at the standard, so look at it at the standard state condition, which is one molar, right? Everything at one molar. At the standard state con condition, is it spontaneous? No, but it, these concentrations, it is spontaneous. Okay, so that's what we're, we're seeing from this. And you can determine, you could potentially determine the ratio that you would have to acquire to make this spontaneous. You could, you could, uh, 
set e this you could set e to uh, basically to zero and figure out that that ratio that would give you the the kind of between spontaneous non spontaneous what are the concentrations above and below the that I'd have to acquire what is the ratio I have to acquire to make this reaction spontaneous okay oxidation reduction um, I don't know if we want to spend a lot of time on that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about batteries. Okay, so um, batteries are basically oxidation reduction reactions that are <coughs> occurring spontaneously. And when do they stop? Or when does it uh, run out of a uh, when does it run out of juice? When does your battery run out of juice? Well, basically, when the concentrations right aren't aren't uh, in cor those correct uh, quantities to allow it to continue to spontaneously uh, allow electrons to transfer through your battery. Okay, and then you have a dead battery when that's when that's the case. Okay. Um, so here's kind of the basic construction. You you can see here we have a zinc anode okay um, usually have uh, a spongy material um, here we have manganese oxide in here okay um, some zinc chloride right because you need that those ions in there to allow for that uh, transfer to occur um, ammonium chloride and then you have that manganese oxide layer uh, and then you have the ga graphite cathode, okay? So this is your cap. So this, this is allowing for the, the transfer of, of these electrons through, the, through this battery, okay? And it's basically like that galvanic cell. That's how it's set up. Um, okay. There's that balanced chemical equation for it. Okay. Um, once again, this one is the outer coating is the zinc anode, okay? Uh, and you have a steel cathode in here, okay? Some spongy materials. Um, and this is your electrolyte solution, potassium hydroxide, zinc hydroxides, etc. okay? That are allowing for those... Uh, <coughs> Processes to occur spontaneously, okay. Um, right. Lead, a lot of batteries. Now, one of the reasons lithium, okay, is a is a good battery because it, if you look at your um, your oxidation reduction potential chart, okay, then uh, lithium is all the way at the bottom of it. Okay, it's at the very bottom, so it, it becomes a, a very good, um, it has a, a very good um, oxidizing potential. It's a good oxidizing agent. Okay. Um, and so it can, it's, you'll he hear a lot of times that you have a lithium ion battery, right? It's because it has. It's one of the best things to, to use in that way. All right. Okay. I think that's enough on batteries. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll look at this tomorrow. Okay. All right. So, um, um, tomorrow we'll finish up this chapter and then, um, we will Are we gonna do we'll do some more examples. We'll finish up the chapter. We'll do some examples over chapter 18. Uh, what's that? Tomorrow's Wednesday. Um, and then we'll see. I'll probably have to finish up some examples on Thursday. And then that's kind of uh, our last day of lecture. And then we'll start review next week.
and we have our test is on Thursday. You have a, a lab final on Wednesday, but you still have class. No, no, what is the test? It's like university. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't say that. No, nope. didn't say that. Oh, it's called Hortus Yeah. <laughs> so. That's right. Who's he going to lab? Monday. I think they're, uh, let me see what it's, uh, what, what do we have scheduled? online. I'll bring the computers in. Oh no, Monday. Fill in the blank. Ah. Multiple choice. <laughs> okay, so <coughs> next week is the eighth. So uh on Monday, we have Lab 21B, I'm sorry, Pre-Lab 18. Um, <laughs> that's our oxidation reduction lab. No, actually that's spontaneity lab. That's thermodynamics lab. 21B is our oxidation reduction. Okay, so um, Tuesday is our, oh, that's our review day. That's when you'll come to lab and um, we'll do the, the review for the final, which I hopefully you've been doing a lot of. That's the time that you can take to uh, ask me questions during the lab period, okay? So that's what Tuesday is. So Monday is our last lab. Tuesday will be our review day. And then Wednesday you'll take your test in the lab, and then Thursday you will take your final exam in here, which is comprehensive over everything. So okay. the teacher's gonna come into the lecture and they're gonna take a picture of the lab. Like just review the assignment. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of stuff to review. Yeah. Well, I think so. Yeah. 